Good morning, my amazing art students. Happy Tuesday. Today's animal lesson is all about the cat. This is my cat, Pablo. We call him Pablo the Wonder Cat, but he's not a super fan of being held, so I'm shocked that he's still hanging out here. But we are going to teach you how to draw a really cool kind of stylized cat based on a, um, an artist named Paul Clay, who did a really cool drawing of a cat. I'm gonna teach you how to do it. And watch that story based on his painting called The Cat and the Bird. So we're gonna be paint, er, painting and drawing The Cat and the Bird today. So what you're gonna need is a white piece of paper, a marker, your um, Crayola markers, and again, we're gonna do that fun trick with Crayola markers and paint them with water. So that's all you need today. Get your supplies, get ready. Okay, so the cat and the bird story. The cat is really upset because he's stuck inside, which I'm sure you can think of a lot of similarities between us and the cat dreaming he was outside and dreaming of that bird. So we're gonna draw that really cool stylized cat that inspired the book. Okay, so you've got your piece of paper. We're gonna do it landscape way, okay? I didn't pre-draw this, so again, I'm drawing it upside down, so hopefully I do a good job. So I'm gonna do a dot here and a dot here, okay? So two dots about a third from the side of your paper. You're gonna come down and make a bump in the middle, kind of a curve line and come back up to that dot or close by, okay? Now you're going to connect almost like a teardrop. We're gonna make a curve line that kind of comes around to there. Okay, and we're gonna make a curved line that comes around to there, okay? Now, so you've got these two teardrops and this one probably needs to be a little bit fatter, but that's okay. Then we are going to do two ellipses right at the top where these two lines overlap. We're gonna do a curved line to the side and then we're gonna do a curved line on top to close that ellipse. Okay, that's one eye. And then we're gonna do a curved line to this side and a curved line back. Now you've got the two eyes of the cat. In cat eyes, cats have really thin irises. Okay, so we're gonna do a really shorter, smaller curved line in the middle and connect it. So you've got the two eyes. Now the nose, we're gonna do another kind of almost like a top of a heart bump. And then we're gonna bring that heart shape down and make a heart for the nose, okay? So there's the nose of the cat. He has a mouth down here, okay? And he'll have a neck sort of like a cat portrait, okay? So that is our cat. The only thing we're missing is our whiskers. One, two, three. One, two, three. So we've got our whiskers now. You can try and make them symmetrical, but I don't think it's kind of cool that he's off kilter there. Okay, and he's dreaming of this bird. So the bird is, again, a very stylized bird. Okay, but it's kind of like a fish, if you've ever drawn a fish shape. So you have the tail, okay? And it's gonna kind of loop around like a figure eight and connect. And then it's going to have a head. Now, I suppose you could, Paul Clay didn't do a beak, but you could probably put a beak on it. And then his legs kind of come up in an upside down V. And 
he sort of has this little dot up here which makes me think he's dreaming of this bird. All right, now we're gonna add some color to him. I have a couple of these drawings. I think I like this one the most. So I'm gonna color the, them both. Okay, show you how to do it. Okay, Paul Clay loved color and he loved blocks of color behind his um, really simple drawings. So we've been learning a lot about cold colors and warm colors. So we're gonna do like little blocks of color, starting with cold and then moving into warm. Okay, so we all know that cold colors, we're just gonna do like kind of a scribble in that area, okay? Of cold colors and just kind of fill it in one next to the other. Cold colors on this side, right over the top of your painting or your picture. And moving into some bright green. Green is still a cold color. And now we're moving into the warm color. So we've got yellow. And we've got orange. Pink. Darker pink, magenta. And a red. going to take your water. Now I said this yesterday, if you didn't have a paintbrush but you had your finger, you can rub your finger on here to get the paper wet and move that color around. You just don't want to rub too hard because it'll kind of eat away at the paper. And remember, it's not going to quite look all watercolory right away. It's going to kind of take a minute to let the water kind of take effect and turn that marker into watercolor. But again, the fat side of the marker and the more ink you put down, the prettier and more saturated the color will be. And where I put my glass down actually made it a little bit wet, so that'll be kind of interesting. Happy accident. Take a minute to take effect over our cat who is dreaming of that bird and being outside. Okay, the part's dry. Let's see if I can get that. All right, there we go. There is our stylized cap today. I've done a couple of these now. See that one, how watery it is? It just depends on the thickness of your paper. This one is also really fun. You could also do the background with crayon if you wanted to, and just do the cat in ink, the cat and the bird. Um, but I like the cold moving into warm colors and all the blocks of color behind. I hope you have so much fun with today's project today. Um, tomorrow, we're gonna learn how to draw dogs. Now, I have to admit, I'm borrowing a lesson from someone else because I'm not very good at drawing dogs and I'm hoping to learn as well. So we're gonna learn together tomorrow. I'm super excited for that lesson. I can't wait to see you guys. Have a great day and I'll see you tomorrow.